Chapter 3, Neural Processing, oh, and Perception. Okay, so let's see. So, um, what is neural processing? <laughs> neural processing is basically what all neurons do when they're talking to each other. It is the interaction of all the signals uh, from all the neurons that are coming together to uh, form a very complex pattern of responding. And what we're going to do is try to understand a little bit about what happens or the relationship between neural processing and perception. So different parts of the brain um, see, seem to be involved in regulating different uh, aspects of vision. And there's different aspects of vision, or put it, put, put, to put that another way, there's different aspects of vision that are mediated by uh, different levels in the nervous system, right? So let's start with the eyeball, which you see there in the, um, right there in the uh, lower left, right? Neural processing starts immediately in the retina, okay? So there is, uh, there, there, there's a process called inhibition where one um, receptor, like a cone, will inhibit the ones, its neighbors, from firing, right? So if it fires, it inhibits its neighbors from fire. And we're going to talk about why that's important, why that's necessary. Um, then there's optic nerve firing that goes on. Um, there are um, the cortex has neurons firing, uh, single neurons as well as groups of neurons firing. All of this is related to our ability to see edges of borders, perceiving darkness and light, perceiving object features, and recognizing objects. All of this is related to our abilities to do these things. All right. One of the most important concepts that you need to understand um, in this course is the concept of lateral inhibition. In other words, uh, if you've got two cells next to each other, when one fires, it inhibits the other one next to it from firing. This happens on a very large scale uh, not only in the retina, but also in other, in, in relation to other sensory systems that we have. We first learned about lateral inhibition in the in the eye by doing experiments on the horseshoe crab, uh, which is known as the limulus. Um, the limul the limulus has a very simple eye. Uh, instead of uh, this complex arrangement that we have with rods and cones. Uh, they have this. They have this little group of structures that make up an eye with a lens on top of it. The structures are called om omatidia, om omatidia, <laughs> um, and they're huge. <laughs> you can actually see an omatidia with your naked eye. They're about the same thickness as the pencil of a lead. So just imagine a bunch of pencil leads, or, or um, even better, a bunch of um, uh, strands of spaghetti all bundled together like that. And when you look at the surface of the spaghetti head on, that's kind of what you're looking at when you look at the uh, eye of a limulus. And then there's this big lens that's sitting on top of it. Uh, that's, that's what their eye is. Uh, it's very simple. But since, they're, since their omatidia are so big, it allows us to record individual responses from individual receptors, right? Because I can hit one receptor at a time and I can stimulate one receptor at a time. So we can see what happens when one receptor gets stimulated. What does it do uh, to the receptors next door to it? Okay, and basically they uh, these experiments were done in the in the mid fifties. They're they're classic set of experiments now. Um, uh, what they found was that whenever you shined a very little fine light onto one of the receptors inside this inside this uh, horseshoe crab's eye, that nerve fiber would start firing like crazy. Okay, um, but if I put light, uh, if I shone light on more than one nerve fiber, like on a circle of maybe, uh, you know, four nerve fibers with one in the middle, uh, for some reason that original nerve fiber that would start firing would slow down. So if you shot it by itself, it was firing really high. But if you shine the light on it and its neighbors around it, it would slow down, all right? And this is due to inhibition. The neighbors around it, the uh, the other omatidias around it, are uh, inhibiting it from firing. We're gonna and uh, 
the question you have to ask yourself at this point is why? <laughs> why do why do our eyes do that? Right. And here's a picture of the of the uh, <laughs> horseshoe crab, Limulus, and there's its eye right there on the side. It's got one on each side. Um, so here's what they found, right? Uh, so the the little cartoon drawing that you see right here, these this is this each represents one omatidia, right? Uh, and the omatidia are wired together like uh, with a, this uh, neural tissue called the lateral plexus, and it's a lot like the uh, amacrine cells or the uh, horizontal cells that we have in our retinas, right? We have uh, we have uh, uh, these, if you remember, if you look at the um, anatomy of our retinas, we have amacrine cells and um, horizontal cells that go that cut across and connect uh, ganglion cells and receptors together so that they can work together. Well, this is part of the explanation to you as to what's happening when I say work together, right? This is what's happening, one of the things that's happening, right? So um, light hits, um, if I were to just shine the light on A, right, on this little guy A, it would fire like crazy. And once again, we have these one of these graphs where each one of these little uh, lines you see represents one action potential. So as you can see, A is going crazy. If I were to light up a and B simultaneously with the same intensity, uh, A would slow down. The recording from A would slow down. If I were to continue lighting up A and B, but I were to increase the intensity of light on B, A would slow down even more. All right? So there's this very curious way that these things are wired together so that um, uh, they work together to inhibit each other, okay? They work together to inhibit each other, all right? Um, there's some weird uh, visual effects that you can see if, uh, that, that you can notice um, due to lateral inhibition, because this process happens in our eyes as well, right? If we have uh, one set, you know, one spot of our retina that's lit up and one spot in our retina that's not lit up, uh, the spot in our retina, retina that's lit up will inhibit the areas around it, right? Um, we have the Herman grid, the Mach bonds, and Mach, Mach bonds, Mach bands, and simultaneous contrast, seeing adjacent areas of different brightness due to the adjacent areas, okay? Uh, let me show you the Herman grid. Okay, this is the Herman grid, and what you do, this is a grid made up of nine squares, and if you look at this closely, what you're going to see after a while of staring at it is you're going to see dots at the intersection. So, especially if it's in your book, if you look at your book on page 55, figure 3, 4, you should see, you should see like gray dots here, 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 and here, okay? You have to ask yourself, why am I seeing that illusion? Why does my brain, why does my brain want to fill that that white space in there with dots? Right? Well, what's happening, is, this is all through lateral inhibition, right? These edges, right, at these edges here, um, have the most uh, exposure of neurons. Uh, I'm sorry, Th this dot, this spot on your retina here has the most uh, um, uh, cones being lit up, right? Cones and rods, I guess, but that are being lit up when you look here. Uh, all these cones and rods together are being lit up at the same time. Now remember, what happens when a neighbor is lit up? What happens to you if your neighbor gets lit up? You decrease your firing, right? So there's a lot of decreases in firing here because we have pure white, right? And there's a lot of decreases in firing here. There's not as much here because there is, um, there's much less inhibition going on here and here because there's less, uh, th there's less white here, right? There's half white and half black, right? So the neurons, the, the uh, receptors that are getting exposed to this area here, they're not getting inhibited as much because there's nothing here, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, right? Uh, they're getting lit up here, right? And they, they get inhibited a little bit in this group, right? But they also, um, 
they, but they don't get inhibited as much, right? Whereas these guys right here are surrounded on all four sides by uh, white. So they're, they're them and their neighbors are getting lit up all around. Right, all around, up right up into this point here, this point here, this point here, and this point here. So as a result, as a result, since there's more lateral inhibition going on here than there is here, uh, our eyes are going to trick us into perceiving a little bit of a darkness here, gray spot here, because of the fact that the neurons here, the uh, receptors here, are being inhibited, so it's going to appear a little bit darker than the ones that are being more brightly uh, activated, right? So here's a, an illustration, right, of what's going on here, right? So um, the, and this is a cartoon drawing to kind of show you what's going on here. So here's, here's one of the intersections of the grid, right? And we have four receptors, or five receptors that we've drawn here, right? Receptor A, B, C, D, and E, right? Notice that receptor A, like I said, receptor A is surrounded on all four sides by brightness, right? So it's going to be getting inhibited from D, from E, from B, and from C. Everybody's going to be inhibiting A, right? Um, what about, and because so, they're all getting stimulated at the same rate, right? They're all, this is all the same amount of light that's coming to your retina. Same amount of light is coming from here, 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 and here, right? So they're all they're all getting stimulated, the same amount. However, uh, they're not getting inhibited by the same amount, right? Because look at D, right? D would only be getting inhibited from A, right? E would only be get inhibited a little bit from A, B would only be getting a little inhibited from A, and C would only be getting a little inhibited from A. So since they're not as inhibited as much, this will look brighter. But A is getting inhibited by four, <laughs> by four versus one, right? So that causes a decrease, as you can see here. That causes uh, E. Uh, e sends a um, uh, a signal to um, to A. They all send signals to A, and as a result, uh, as a result, that uh, the brightness of the light is attenuated, or we perceive it as being a little bit lighter. Right, because um, because of this inhibition. Uh, here's another example. Right, um, so let's say that each one of the cells are getting uh, one or are, 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 are getting once stimulated at one hundred, right, um, and that would let C D. And, and, and C, D, E, and B are not being inhibited, right? They're just firing away. So if they get stimulated with a value of 100, and this is just a, a, a hypothetical unit, right? There's not, you know, we're not talking about 100 anything. It's just a hypothetical unit, right? So these four, these four receptors around, are, if they get stimulated with a value of 100, uh, they will inhibit their neighbors, by a by a, a factor of ten, right? So they'll reduce their neighbors by ten, right? And then they'll transmit out here a hundred, right? So I'm gonna send out a hundred, I'm gonna send out a hundred, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send out a hundred, and I'm gonna send out a hundred. And at the same time, while I'm sending out a hundred, while these four cells are sending out a hundred, they're gonna inhibit their neighbors by minus ten. Well, nobody's inhibiting this guy, so he gets to send out 100, or this guy, or this guy, or this guy. They're sending out 100. However, look who's getting inhibited in the middle, A. A is getting minus 10 from each one of these four guys. So in instead of sending out a signal that, hey, I saw 100, A is sending out a signal, hey, I saw 60. Okay? Um, so here is... Um, Right, so here's a here's another example. Right, this is why you're not seeing the uh, the black dot at D. Right, look what's going on with D. Right, D is getting stimulated and it sends out a huge signal. Right, bam, but its neighbor F and H, represented on this on this three dimensional grid here and here, they're not getting stimulated. They're in the black. Since they're not getting stimulated, they're not inhibiting D. 
right? They're not inhibiting D. D's only getting inhibited uh, a little bit from uh, um, a little bit from uh, 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 G and A, but D's not getting inhibited at all from F and H, right? So D D is allowed because it's in a bright spot surrounded by dark spots. It's allowed to send more of a signal than A is, which accounts for the Hermann illusion. Okay, and here's that here's that principle illustrated again, right? So uh, the dark spots here are only get up getting lit up 20, so they only send a signal of 20. Say they're saying, "Hey, I see dark," right? <laughs> I see dark. I see dark. And these guys that were in the middle row, they all see light. I see light 100. I see light 100. I see light 100. But since they're not, uh, since uh, the D is not getting uh, inhibited as much as the uh, first neuron was in the first example, it's able to send out a signal of 76. So it's not quite as high as 100, right? But it's much better than a signal of 60, right? Because it's only getting inhibited a little tiny bit by its dark neighbors here and a lot more by its lighter neighbors here.